And I realized as struggles occurred, because they do, that when God imparts a dream in your heart, and when your reason for being is in alignment with God's reason for you to be here, that your passion exceeds any fear. Welcome to Mamas in Spirit, a podcast pointing you towards God in everything you are and everything you do. I'm Lindy Wynn, and I'm blessed to be here with you. Hello, and welcome to this gathering of Mamas in Spirit. I am delighted to be here today with Amy D'Ambra from My Saint, My Hero. Amy, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I love how you just intro it into just, I'm blessed to just be here today and just enjoy this moment to share together. So thank you for allowing me to be here. And everyone can already hear why I've asked Amy to join <laughs> us. <laughs> She is so deeply centered in the Holy Spirit and she is responding with yes to her personal call through my Saint, my hero. And so Amy, we're going to open in prayer and then we'd love for you to share with us a little bit about you and my Saint, my hero. Perfect. Dearest Lord, thank you. Thank you for your divine and holy plan. Thank you for bringing each one of us together today. Those who are listening, whether they're in their homes or their neighborhoods, their cars, wherever they may be with Amy and I to grow closer to you, Lord. That's really the only reason for each one of our lives is to pilgrimage closer to you and your Holy Spirit before being united eternally with you forever. So thank you for this gift and this time and we just pray that it's deeply centered in your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 It's beautiful. Thanks, Thank Amy. you. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy, please tell us about you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a mom, just like you are. And before my Saint, my hero, I was climbing the corporate ladder and I was racing. And although I have an incredible husband and I had three beautiful children, I kind of almost stepped out of myself and was racing so fast that I forgot what was important. I forgot how to love every day. I forgot how to just really be present and receive the gift of being a mom and having that be enough. And I was checking off this incredible list. I mean, really an incredible list. And soon I was climbing this ladder to be the best in our company. It was a financial company that I was working with. And I was considered one of the top young salespeople in the country. And I began to numb myself to those things that would awaken my heart and feed myself in areas of what the world deemed as worthy and what the world would see as important. And the more that I was racing, the more I was separating myself out. And it was like this duality that was very uncomfortable. And my husband, as such a kind man that he is, he was just reaching out for me to say, come back, come back to center. And at that time, I didn't know what center was. So we went on a trip to his home place where his parents grew up in Ishkia. And he asked me to silence the exterior distraction of the phone and the computer. And I am not here to say that I don't use that technology because I do. But at the time, I was getting lost in it. So he needed to remove it from me so that I could learn again how to be silent so that I could hear the word of God that I could feel him holding me, that I could remember that he loved me so much that he had given me this family and these children and to be able to bask in that glory, not have to earn it, but just receive it. And when I was so busy trying to earn everything, I had forgotten what it felt like to be held. I forgot and I numbed out to what it felt like just to be loved. And in that moment when I was on vacation with my husband and my children, and he removed these distractions from me, I sat quiet enough to actually feel the sand under my feet and to hear my kids laughing. And there was something I wanted more of. It's almost as if I allowed in that silence for my heart to reopen and reawaken. And all I needed to do was ask God in that moment, come fill me up. Lord, fill me up. 
because I want to stay in your presence. I want to feel this love flooding into my heart without having to earn it. And I want to feel forgiven for running so fast that I forgot you. Because in that fast pace, I was making excuses for the lack of intimacy with God, with Christ, and the lack of taking time to pray. So I first had to remember that I was worthy of his love and that I could start new. And in that space, when I really did get down on my knees and just ask, please, Lord, if there's something that you want me to do with my talents, you've given me so much, Lord. You have given me the ability to be creative, the ability to work hard, the ability to just want so much, but I want to want for you. I want to work for you because I know if I work for you, Lord, that you will allow my family to remain front and center that you will remind me that being a mom is such a beautiful gift. And you will remind me every day when I wake up that this life is so beautiful. And you will remind me how to love. And you will remind me how to open myself up to being an instrument of God's peace. Open myself up to saying, I can't do this on my own, Lord, and I need you. And I know that that's why I started My Saint, My Hero is because I wanted to share with the world how much God loves us. And I wanted to share with the world that saints were real people, just like you and me. They were real people. They had struggles. But what they did is they remembered to allow God to live within them and through them. And miracles happened. So that's how I want to live. I want to live in a place where every day we wake up and say, God, use me as an instrument today. God, guide me and God, remind me, perfect me and protect me. That is so profoundly beautiful and just sitting in your presence, which I'm sure listeners can sense is a holy experience. And I'm deeply moved by your openness to your husband's feedback and his holiness that he recognized what he did and that he encouraged you so definitively in such a clear way and invited you into new life and to make such a profound shift in your life. Because I think that's a shift that so many can relate to. And I'm sure so many people listening are thinking, gosh, I really need to make that shift in my life. Because our world feeds us so many of the things that you essentially unknowingly bought into at first and seem like they will bring us a deep sense of meaning and purpose in our lives, but ultimately pull us away from the sacredness of our lives and what really matters and those holy moments and encounters and God's holy presence. Yeah, my husband definitely is the anchor for that. And he did invite me for this incredible transformation. And a funny story is just because he's so anchored in his faith he encourages me with conviction and without any doubt. And he reminds me to go to mass. He reminds me to pray before every meal. He reminds me to take time and pray every day. And when this transformation was occurring in my heart in Ishkia about, gosh, 12 years ago now, I said to him, I said, something's stirring in my heart, and I'm going to go over to that church across the street and kneel in front of St. Giovanni Giuseppe and pray. And he looked at me, he goes, you are? Great, because he would always ask, come sit and kneel with me. And I'd be like, why are we kneeling in front of a saint? I don't understand it all. You know, <laughs> They're, Aren't they dead? You know, I'd be, So I said, I'm going to go kneel in front of this saint from Ishkia, who's an inspiration saint. And I knelt in front of him and I just said, if there's something, if there's something you want me to do, Lord, please speak to my heart. And I heard so loud and clear, share the story of the saints as inspiration to the youth and remind them that they're all called to be saints of this new millennium and remind them that we were real people. It was as if St. Giovanni Giuseppe was talking to me. He's like, we're not to be adorned on a shelf, but we're just real people. So go out there and remind the youth that they're all called to be saints. And all they have to do is walk in union with Christ and miracles will happen in their life. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And so I went back outside and I said, honey, I think I'm supposed to do something to share the story of the lives of the saints. And he said, great, go back in and ask how. (laughs) I mean, that's my husband. So when you said, not only does he invite you into a transformation, but he's there. He sure is without doubt. It wasn't like he said, 
you're crazy or how or what or what. He was like, go back in and ask how, because he was so strongly convicted that God would tell us exactly how to do it. So I went back in, I got down on my knees and I asked how, and it came completely clear. It's to be called My Saint, My Hero. You're supposed to make it cool and hip. It's like a fashionable jewelry line that everybody will want to wear. And whether they wear it because they think it's cool or trendy, or if they wear it because they have a connection to that saint, we will do the rest. All we need is for it to be authentic, to be based in your faith, to be worn with love, to be made with prayer, and we will do the rest. And so I was like, all right, I even got so much that I was to make it with a round saint medal and a rectangle tag. And on all my pieces, you will see. And we do put like one virtue on the tag because that was in it. So like Archangel Michael is protection. St. Joan of Arc is courage. St. Benedict is blessing. I can go on and on. They said, just do one virtue and allow that to open up that spark in the wearer's heart and we will do the rest. It's like we, the company of heaven, the angels and saints in heaven, we will walk through that door and open up that window and spark and reignite the Holy Spirit within people. I was like, all right, if all I have to do is make a hip and cool fashionable jewelry and (laughs) remind them and have it based in my faith and tell the stories of the saints, I can do this. So I went back out to my husband and I told him the whole story. We actually wrote it on a napkin the first time, and I've heard so many stories of people being inspired by the Holy Spirit, sharing it with those that they love most, and just writing it down on a napkin. I mean, I wish I could find out how many companies start on a napkin. (laughs) (laughs) And I realized as struggles occurred, because they do, that when God imparts a dream in your heart, and when your reason for being is in alignment with God's reason for you to be here, that your passion exceeds any fear and that you just keep going through those difficult times with this grace of knowing, okay, I can't stop because God's got me. And every time I thought to myself, this is hard. Like, are you sure, God, you want me to do this? Because my other life was, you know, at least part of the work part. I got that down. I don't know anything about making jewelry. I don't know anything about making these stories of the saints come alive through fashionable jewelry. And every time I thought I didn't know anything, it's when he guided me stronger. And he just, I kid you not, there was a day where I needed a medal made. And I thought, I can't get these. I don't know how to do it. And the phone rang really as I was thinking, I I, I don't know, Lord, you keep asking me to do this, but I have to find a metal maker. Like I got to find somebody that's going to make these medals. And the phone rang and it was a friend. And they said, I heard you have a mission to make some religious jewelry. They said, I have a friend in Rhode Island that just needs some more work. And if you'd give them work, they'll make your medals for you. And sure enough, that person made a medal. And then right when I needed it most, I went on a pilgrimage to Medjugorje. And I met Anita, who started weaving for us. And that's our most popular bracelet is the blessing bracelet that has been woven in Medjugorje since the beginning. And it continues to be woven there, a place that is sacred, a place that, again, transformed my heart, a place that my husband, again, encouraged me to go on to pilgrimage for 10 days. He said, I will take care of the family. I know. He said, I will take care of the kids. I want you to go and I want you to encounter Christ in a sacred place. So he not only invited me to go, he made it so that I could go. And in that place, I fell deeper in love with the mission of my Saint, my hero and found incredible women that sit at the base of the blue cross where our blessed mother appears and they weave and they weave in all that love and prayer into every piece. So it's my pilgrimage, my journey every day with my Saint, my hero and I just want to share that with everybody so that they can just be inspired and ignited. I love how you use the word pilgrimage because this has been a pilgrimage for you Mm -hmm. and transformed and changed you. Mm -hmm. Completely. Yeah, it is. And I'm still on it. And so all of you that are listening, you're on your journey and your pilgrimage and I join you with your journey right here and right now. And if the Lord is sparking your heart just to... Uh, love you deeper and to encounter your magnificence, I just invite you to say yes to him and to remember right here and right now how beautiful you are, how wonderful you are, and how you are a daughter of the King. You are here for a divine and vital reason. You, 
my friend, you, all the mothers, the fathers, the brothers, the sisters, anybody listening, you are divinely right in this moment to be here. You are called and the world needs you. Thank you, Amy. That is so beautiful. And I love what you're saying and how you're speaking to each listener's heart because that's where God speaks to each one of us into each one of our hearts. And you're talking about saints and saints. They were each one person that said a very small yes, yet a profound yes to reflect God, reflect Christ profoundly in the world. And we're each called to that. And you're really speaking to each person's heart for their own yes. That's how God works. God is made visible through your love. God is made visible through your heart, through your words, through your kind actions. God looks at people through your eyes and you become a mirror of the divine within them. So I invite you to ask, Lord, how do you want to use me today? Lord, allow me to be an instrument of your peace and your love right here and right now. Allow me to be a spark of your joy to someone that needs it most. And Lord, I say yes to when you spark my heart, I will be your instrument, Lord. I love and I'm so aware of how conscious you are each day of being on your pilgrimage. And I literally think of a path. Each of our lifetimes are essentially, hopefully, a path and a journey into the sacred heart of Christ. And hopefully we get closer to that each day through our little yeses that somehow, like yours, someone could look at my saint, my hero and think, oh, that's a really big yes. (laughs) But really it started from a very intimate and sacred moment. And it's been many, many yeses along the way, even when, like you said, you hit times where you're like, oh my goodness, how will this ever happen? Or what am I doing? Or you question it. But then God reveals God's self again because you are open and your awareness of being on this pilgrimage. I'm so grateful for our faith because when great things happen, we have a place to turn in gratitude and thanksgiving because these amazing things that happen in our life are a gift. And then it reminds us and it gets us in the habit so that when difficult times come, we know where to turn. When difficult times come, we know where to rest our head so that when times are a struggle, And we don't know how to get our energy. We don't know how to find our joy that we do know to fall into the lap of Christ, that we do know to say, I'm broken right now. Can you hold me and sit in that and trust in that? And I promise you, it's a supernatural grace and love knows how to scoop up our pieces and pour his love and light and rebuild us from our broken pieces into something even more magnificent than we could ever know. Yes. And is there a time in your life that you could share where you really experienced that? Oh, gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. There's been many different times where I have felt in my human self that I wasn't meant for this, that he called the wrong person, that I'm not good enough. And one time in particular, I had a, a big opportunity I've had the opportunity to share my Saint My Hero on QVC. And QVC has been an incredible opportunity. Beautiful people, incredible hosts that just embraced my Saint My Hero and wanted to share it with their entire family and their community. And that's a big audience. And I felt a responsibility to God to share His love every minute that I had on that forum, on that stadium, if you may call it. And I knew the magnitude. And one day I was there And I was sharing about his love and him holding me and and sharing about the magnificence of the day and sharing about a day that Pope Francis happened to come visit the United States. It was the first time he had visited. And he actually blessed all of the My Saint My Hero pieces, which were incredible. And we were able to be one of the signature medals for that event. And it was world meeting of families. It was a moment that we were celebrating families. It was a moment that we were saying family is the most important vehicle for God's love. It is the home of where God's love flourishes. And I was so magnificently caught up in that that I forgot to sell the bracelets. And QVC is a sales portal. And I got off and I was basically kind of kicked off the show. And 
I felt like I failed. And I'm telling you now this feeling from the perspective now of realizing that what I did in that moment was what I was called to do. But let me tell you, in that moment, I didn't feel that way. This is after many prayer and much, you know, on my knees. In the moment, I felt like a failure because being taken off of that set and saying, you don't have any more airtime now, and this didn't work is as if you're being the, the pitcher in a, in a baseball game and you just lost the game for them. That's how I felt. I felt like I lost the game. I felt like I lost it for my saint, my hero. I felt like I didn't do my job for God. And I felt like a failure that I wasn't called to do this. And I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't. And I really allowed myself to go down into this spiral of angst, anxiety, and depression because I didn't feel worthy and I didn't feel good enough. And everything started to crumble in that hour of the midnight hours when you're supposed to be sleeping and renewing. I don't think those are great hours to be dwelling on what you've done wrong because it's very difficult to get a clear perspective. But I was. I was dwelling on what I did wrong. And I just wanted to hide. And what I did instead of hiding is because I had the practice and the habit of sitting in front of God that it took everything in me to get me the strength to just walk through the doors of an adoration chapel. And I was in Philadelphia and there is, was 24 hour adoration. So I woke up at five in the morning, I believe. Well, I didn't really sleep. And at the time I was with my friend, Christine, and I said, Christine, will you walk with me to adoration? I need to sit in front of Jesus. I need him to heal me. I feel broken in a big way. And not only was I broken, but I felt publicly broken because of all those people. They say at some times, there's millions of people that could be watching that, up to 90 million people. So I was like, oh my gosh, I just failed. So big, so big. So I got myself into that adoration chapel and I knelt and I still felt broken. 6 a.m. came around and there was mass and I didn't feel worthy to go receive and I felt broken. And I got down on my knees and I heard him say, just pretend because you can't get yourself there. I was so in this headspace of I was wrong and I wasn't worthy. He said, in this moment, I can't convince you that you were right. You can't, I can't convince you that you're okay, but can you pretend for a moment that you did exactly what I asked you to do? Can you pretend for a moment that I knew exactly every moment of that show and that there was somebody out there that needed to hear what you said? Can you pretend for a moment that it wasn't about the sales? that it was about the story? Can you pretend for a moment that it was about the families and it was about your prayer with the families? And can you pretend for a moment that I just wanted you there for that moment? And something happened. I was able to pretend that I was okay until I finally believed it. And I was able to walk up and receive him and feel worthy to receive him at Eucharist. So yes, I've been broken. Hmm. And yes, our faith has brought us back. And yes, God has healed me more times than not. (laughs) He's always, he's always there. He never fails us. He never fails us. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm so deeply struck by how you said that you heard from God. Can you pretend for a moment that it wasn't about the sales? Because another two words that you've used during this podcast are that you need visual reminders. But what I'm hearing is what my saint, my hero really is, is a visual reminder. Each piece of jewelry is a visual reminder of a sacred encounter with Christ and with God and that we're on a pilgrimage, that this is what it's really about. It's not about the jewelry, like you said You didn't know how to make jewelry. I mean, you were all game to figure it out in some way, (laughs) even though nerve wracking, I hear, and all the pieces came together, yet it was never about the jewelry. It's been about the visual reminder that we are on a sacred pilgrimage towards Christ. Amen. And that's what you're intimately on. And I love that you shared that story. Thank you so much because... Amy, you're really successful from a human standard or a human viewpoint. My saint, my hero has blown up (laughs) (laughs) and has grown, but it's grown because it speaks to people's hearts. It speaks to their souls, really, because it reminds each one of us 
what's really important in life. I'm wearing one right now from my parents-in-law and I'm already loving Amy for so many reasons. And I'm also loving the fact that she probably has about 20 pieces (laughs) on her wrist And every one of them has a lot of meaning. So I just can't take them off. I love that so much. Yeah. I thank you for that. That is my why. That is our why is to make God's love visible through a tangible and wearable reminder. And I, I am on my pilgrimage. It is real for me and it is intimate and it is sacred and like all of our journeys. And I wear the bracelets as my own reminder. And I remember one time we have one bracelet called Breathe and my daughter Caroline was going off to university at Leeds in the UK and it happened to be 9-11 that she was flying. So between her leaving out of the country to go to university, and we live in California, so that's really far. And between her leaving and it being 9-11 and her flying on her own, and I was going to meet her there a week later, I started to get very anxious and my heart was (laughs) palpitating. I really couldn't catch my breath. And I reached down and I felt my breathe bracelet. I have it on me. There it is. (laughs) I felt my breathe bracelet and it's one simple metal one simple string, one simple reminder that God alone is enough. And as we breathe, we connect into God and we allow chaos to just be washed away, to re-enter and re-be grounded in our spiritual knowing and our spiritual truth. And I was able to breathe and in that breath, I created space for God to comfort me and to remind me that she'd be okay. So yes, I use my bracelets, I wear them, we pray with them, and all of them are woven, like I said, in a sacred pilgrimage site, and the medals themselves are made in another sacred pilgrimage site of Laredo. So I love the fact that we are all connected, and that we are all on the pilgrimage together, and even though we might not be on a physical pilgrimage in Medjugorje, or be physically present in Laredo, where the medals are made, we are all united through the Holy Spirit. To these sacred places around the world to connect into our sacred place inside our heart where God lives. So as we connect with that, we just rise together and remind each other of the sacred journey we're on. And I love that you say that, so thank you. And I just am looking at this one bracelet that I won't take off, and it's getting a little old, but this one, it's the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It's my reminder of the scapular, the promise, as well as I actually swam in the Sea of Galilee with this bracelet on. And the feeling of being in the place where Christ walked and to swim in the waters, it was almost as if those sacred waters have been infused with the presence of the Holy Spirit in such a big way that even 2,000 years after, I could dive into those waters and be bathed so significantly in the Holy Spirit that it just, almost as if every cell in my body was reignited and re-awakened. like And I remember a spiritual director said, go under the water and open your eyes. So we run under the water and we are to dunk ourselves seven times. It's like this sacred seven bathing. And as I opened my eyes, it was as if the water was glowing. It was as if the glowing was coming from the sun above and also like the ground below, and it was glowing. So I just invite you into the waters of God's love. Just immerse yourself into that water and allow yourself to be soaked in His grace as we journey together into that beautiful Sea of Galilee. Thank you, Amy. And before we close, is there anything else that you'd want to share with listeners? Oh, I just thank you. Thank you for you. Thank you for what you're doing today to share God's love with whoever it may be. If it's your child, if it's your pet, if it's like we said, a teacher or whoever, I just thank you for taking this moment right now to say yes. And Amy, where can people, if they are not already familiar (laughs) with My Saint, My Hero, where can they find it and find you? Thank you for asking that. My Saint, My Hero, we are online at mysaintmyhero.com. And we also have boutiques. If you go onto our website, you will see a list of different boutiques. And I hope that there's a boutique right around the corner that carries My Saint, My Hero and shares blessings with everybody. 
and I will say a beautiful time to come on and just enjoy my Saint My Hero is during the month of October. World Kindness Day is November 13th. And so throughout the month of October leading up to World Kindness Day, for every new blessing that you receive, we are giving one free so that you can share with someone in need. Oh, that's so, lovely. I know. I'm really excited about Thank that. You. Thank wonderful you. What wonderful timing for us to be doing this. Yes. And we have a lot of bracelets. We call them like the wearable blessings for kids, for you moms, for the dads, for brothers out there. So we really recognize that it is a family and we all want to be united in love and in protection and God's grace. Yes, and thank you for saying that because I have purchased my Saint My Hero jewelry before for different loved ones. And one of the most recent was my goddaughter. She was being confirmed and I gave her one of the prayer partner bracelets. So she has a prayer partner bracelet. I have a prayer partner bracelet. And then I gave another set to my daughter and her mom. So we'd all have them to be together in prayer and Holy Spirit. Yeah. I love it. And I love that, like you said, they're a reminder that we're loved. And they're also that reminder to pray for one another. So that when you look at it, when it catches your eye, you're like, oh, wait, that's my prayer part. Okay, I'm going to pray for them right now. Yes. And I love this. One time I was in prayer and I heard really loud that as we pray, we offer our angels the fuel they need to do the work that they're asking to do. Oh, that's beautiful. So our prayer are their fuel. I love that. So whenever we're sparked to pray, just pray. Even if it's 3 a.m. in the morning and for some reason you wake up, just pray because that just means that they need your fuel to go answer a prayer to somebody in need in that moment. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Amy, you are so special. I want to thank you so much for being on Mamas in Spirit and just for sharing this moment with all of us. I sense the Holy Spirit profoundly in you and just rushing from you. (laughs) And I love that. I'm thankful. That's it's very inspiring. So thank thank you you so much. Thank you. And God bless everyone and your podcast. Thank you. And can you close us in prayer? Oh, absolutely. Let's let's hold hands. Yes. We're holding hands, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) And we're holding your hand as well. Yes. Heavenly Father, Blessed Mother, all those beautiful angels and saints in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity just to feel your love in such a big way. Lord, I ask you just to spark and ignite every heart of those that are listening, all their friends and their family. Lord, remind them that they are so loved, that you love them so much, Lord. And we ask right now that the Holy Spirit be so fully alive in their home that it just explodes with joy and with laughter and with grace. We ask that you bless all those that need it most. Lord, we ask that right now we join our hearts in our prayers and send it out to those that are in need of your love the most. In the most holy and blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you again to Amy and to everyone for being here. It has been just a delightful time. And know that we are praying for you and that we're holding you close in our hearts. And reach out at any time at mamasinspirit at gmail.com. And you can also go directly to mamasinspirit.com and connect with me through there as well as on social media. And I hope that you will share Mamas in Spirit and this beautiful message from Amy with someone you love today. Can't wait to be together again next time. This is Lindy Wynn with Mamas in Spirit. May God bless you and yours always. Mm